was it worth the wait? <laughs> Hell yeah, it was worth the wait. Uh, I want to welcome everyone who's watching on the Yahoo live stream tonight. And no spoilers, we're not going to talk about the episode we just saw. I can't believe Jamie died, though. That was crazy. <laughs> Uh, I would love to introduce now to you our panelists for this evening. <laughs> Up first, the woman who started it all, and her mind is an international treasure, Diana Gabaldon. The man responsible for not one, but two of the greatest TV shows of all time, executive producer and writer, Ronald D. Moore. <laughs> the man who's giving Tatiana Maslany a run for her Emmy-worthy multiple character acting uh, snuff, Tobias Menzies. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't write an intro for him because I know you'd be screaming so loud. <laughs> Sam Hewen. And one of my favorite people I've ever met in this job, who is so gorgeous both inside and out, I'm pretty sure she's like an otherworldly entity that's just visiting for a while, Katrina Bell. tonight. One, it won't be boring. And two, I promise we're going to get to some hard-hitting questions. But first of all, I want to start, given that this is a Scottish show, with um, a, an icebreaker that my grandfather, Alexander Veach, a Scotsman, uh, used to love to do. It's a drinking game. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, thank God. It's a drinking game called Ne'er Have I Air. Yeah, <laughs> Now, you have water bottles, and you can choose to play with water. Yeah, no. OK. No. <laughs> or we have some uh, official Outlander whiskey. It's your choice what you would what you choose. There's water behind you. Can Kat or... start with a forfeit? Because she's going to be this anyway. <laughs> Outlander whiskey. Wow. Yes. yes. This is great. This is right. enough right here. Here we go. Look at this. Do all panels like this, right? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do, do you not open a bottle of whiskey, either of you gentlemen? No, you've never done it before? Here, Here. Got it. Let me hold that for you. Got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, just give her a straw. <laughs> Did you just want the bottle, Kat? Yeah. I yeah, guess I figured the much. bigger one. All right, so the way this works is that every time I say something oh, yeah. that you have done, you need to take a sip. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Up first. I have never worn a kilt off the show. So do we drink or not? If you have not. No, if you have done it, oh, you drink. Sucks. If you have done it off the show. Wait, I've worn like kind of a kiltish skirt for Irish I've, dancing. I've like, does that count? Can I drink? Drink. I've never worn a kilt. Mm. All right. So the rule is, if you if you have done it, you drink. Okay. okay. Ne'er have I ever cried at something a fan said to me or sent to me. Cried. <laughs> I swear there was a letter that I cried at. <laughs> I'm still confused. If you've, done, <laughs> if you've done it, you drink. Okay. 
if you drink. done it, you so drink. Double the answer is to drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Ne'er have I ever played a prank on a co-star or co-worker. <laughs> Ne'er have I ever gone skinny dipping on or off set. Really By the way, <laughs> Sam's big gulp there, you'll see uh, that was a little bit of a spoiler alert for something that happens a few episodes down the road. <laughs> that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Right. yeah that's <laughs> the one I meant. Uh, okay. Ne'er have I ever screwed up a scene by laughing. Oh, God. <laughs> Salon Shabbat? Yeah, finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Ne'er have I ever... <laughs> Ne'er have I ever caused someone else to screw someone else to screw up a scene by laughing. <laughs> I get your I get your plan here. <laughs> Ne'er have I ever gotten the giggles during a sex scene. I mean, Chris, come on. <laughs> oh, Done. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like I said. Never, uh, never have I ever wondered how many more of these things we're going to do because I'm starting to feel a little tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we have you liquored up. <laughs> what was that? This, this first question is for Kat and Sam. Um, I'm curious because, you know, the fans have responded so well to your chemistry. Was there a moment that you knew that the chemistry was going to work? And when was that moment? Am I supposed to drink now, or...? <laughs> <laughs> you can keep drinking after every question. Oh, it makes great. it more fun that way. Um, um, I think, I mean, I definitely think from the moment that I met Sam, when we had our chemistry test, um, <laughs> which I always think is quite a funny name, like, do they have a barometer in there? I mean, they're like, yes, you've passed the 50 mark. <laughs> um, no, but I walked in and, and he, you know, I, he was obviously had already been cast and I was quite nervous and I think I might have been running a little bit late. Um, and he just immediately put me at ease and we, we had a really, I don't know, we had a really two good scenes and we really got into it. And, mm. um, I think from that moment I was just like, oh, well, he's such a cool guy. Like we, I don't know, it was, it was really good. So I thought, well. If this works, then this will be really fun. I remember there was a moment I put you in a bear hug and I felt like you were really pissed at me. <laughs> I think and you might... actually, I tried to move your arms and you no. inadvertently punched me in yeah. the face. I, I remember thinking you were going to punch me back and I thought, this is the start of a, a beautiful relationship. <laughs> and then maybe filming, uh, shooting wise, I think the scene where I find you next to the burn and take you back to the Highlanders and it just. We'd shot stuff before that, but I felt there was like this, you know, this kind of interesting dynamic between us. Ron and Diana, can you talk about? Um... <laughs> <laughs> this is the casting of the two of them, and and what you felt. What was the moment for you that you knew that it was going to work between the two of them? I know Sam was cast first, correctly. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think we, we, when we saw the tapes of each of them, we sort of knew right away, oh my God, that's them, that's Claire, that's Jamie. I and mean, then you kind of hold your breath, and is this going to work? And we put them in the room together, and we saw the tape, and it was just kind of immediate, but it was just a lot of holding your breath and you know, seeing things when you look at it. It was, yeah. 
yeah, no, I, I got the tapes, you know, ex post facto and so forth. But I was astonished on both occasions, you know, when I saw Sam. I was, it took 10 seconds, literally. The first five seconds where he doesn't look anything like his photos. He looks much better. And, um, <laughs> And uh, the next better, better, what you, better than what you said last time. I <laughs> That's like the most malign photographer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, Sam, you're looking a little grotesque tonight, too. <laughs> yeah, uh, raise your hand if you think Sam looks grotesque tonight. Or drink. <laughs> that would be zero people in this huge theater. Okay, yeah, I should maybe point out for the record that grotesque does not mean ugly, hideous, or any of the other synonyms. It means really unusual looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start putting that in the scripts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The grotesque Jamie Fraser enters. <laughs> No, it was just about that fast when I saw the, uh, the chemistry test between them as well. You know, she came on in this beautiful tartan dress, and I was thinking, she looks great, you know, but my God, she's almost as tall as he is. And uh, then, you know, five seconds later, bang, she was gone, and it was Claire, and he already was Jamie, and I was just wrapped. You know, we got to the end of the scene, and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, go on. <laughs> so that's always a good sign. <laughs> Tobias, you are so good in both roles. I'm curious what it's like behind the scenes, if you're all sort of joking around together between takes, or if, Tobias, do you really sort of stay in character? Because Blackjack is so dark. I think it would be hard to sort of go in and out of that. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. Do I? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> I do work out the first day because we we had filmed a lot of the 40s stuff first, and you know we were goofing around. We had this great time. We were driving around in a vintage car. And oh, recorded. they were like such a like oh these <laughs> <laughs> so lovely anyway. darling. So everything's great. And then... but, <laughs> but we got to the first day where he was. Uh, playing blackjack and we had that scene where I meet him by the water and I'm you know it's like Frank and you know it's not him and Tobias was all quiet and off in his own thing and I was like uh, where, 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 where's my buddy gone you know um, but I think in the rest of the time you're not the rest of the time he's just the same idiot that he always is <laughs> <laughs> you paying me? Yeah. Really expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Ron and Dan, I know, you know, there are a lot of uh, dark scenes that are coming up for the second half of the season. Um, what can you tell us about that? And, and do you think that it is a darker arc than we've seen in the first eight episodes? Uh, let me ask, how many of you have read the book? In that case, I sort of don't need to answer that. <laughs> so it's a light little tale. It's fun. Uh, it, it does go to some harrowing places. You know, I think if you haven't read the book, I think you would be surprised by the direction it takes and that this is where it, it goes as a finale, which is a, very unusual to take your characters in. It was one of the things that attracted me to the book in the first place was it was very unexpected. I didn't see any of that coming. And I thought, well, that's a fascinating journey to, to take an audience in. And I, I, you know, I'm very proud of the way we realized it and proud of the actors, I think, you know, and the director. I think that they were very fearless and on the stage, and I think it comes through in the show. And, you know, I, I think a finale is, this is a weird word to use if you know the end of the book. It's a satisfying ending. There's a sense of completion to what we're doing. It, you know, it culminates, yes. <laughs> Fill in the double entendre here. <laughs> but I, I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's an ending worthy of the story. I think it's like, it's, it's, it's a great finale and I think it, you know, it, it'll take you places you weren't uh, expecting to go, which is what the great, the great stories do. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
um, to I have to say to before you go on that, uh, you know, I once famously told uh, Shooks on Spain that I wanted to see him raped and tortured because I thought that would be the greatest thing, you know, and uh, it was. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> and uh, I need to give Tobias credit for that as well. <laughs> no, and uh, you know, in all seriousness, and yeah, in all seriousness, I have never seen two people do such courageous things on screen before. They did a really wonderful job. Um, to the actors, I'm just curious, when you signed on to the role and when, you know, when you were discussing what the role would be, how much did you know about what was going to be happening farther down the road? Because you haven't read all of the books, is that correct? I know some of you have read more than others, but how much did you know initially about what, where your character was headed? Um, I didn't know very much at all, actually. And, um... Yeah, I had a sort of, I think, the first episode, or some sort of scenes from the first episode. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, this has been all quite a journey, really. Um, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have signed up if I'd known. <laughs> it's, it's still time. <laughs> you, said, you said to me, should I read the books? No, no. No, no, no fine. <laughs> nothing, nothing in it. Enjoy the journey. <laughs> See where it takes you. <laughs> I guess I, I, I'd sped read, uh, you know, the first book and, uh, you know, Googled and whatever the other books. But, um, <laughs> you know, you don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. And, uh, and even when you read stuff, you still don't know where that's going to take you as an actor, as a person. And I think, um, you know, we, we know the general idea of where Diana's books go, but, but in actually living that, it's, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. And I think where all three of us are, but... I think our relationship at the very end of, of this end of this season is really a strange but interesting place. And mm -hmm. As Rob said, <laughs> uh, yeah, satisfying. up with a little version of the newlywed game now Oh, for Kat and Sam. Kat and Sam. I did bring props. I'm telling you, this is not going to be a boring panel. I oh, yay. Ah, I love you need to get a little right, right on wipe off board here. And so I know you are newly married on the show. You're going through some normal marital issues when you're, you know, when you're, when you're a trans century couple, as you put it earlier. Uh, that's a pen with the racer We're going to team. Oh, Oh, wow! <laughs> see, this is how it is. They're always gang up on me. So let's see how well you know each other. Now, no cheating. You cannot look on each other's board, okay? <laughs> All right. We got the little. First one. <laughs> Number of times you have watched an episode together. Oh, I see that. <laughs> uh, which episode? We should say, are we counting tonight or not? Oh. It is. It, not including tonight. Oh. Not including tonight. Um, wait, that changes things. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go. Hold on. Uh, okay, I'm, I've got, no, you can't count. He's got a whole episode. A whole episode. A whole episode. A whole episode. Whole episode. I'm going to go this way. Credit to credit. All right. Reveal. Oh, <laughs> oh you got to rub my out. Um, <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Everything's a double entendre tonight. Okay. Word or phrase that Sam says all the time? <laughs> well, she does all the time. 
Oh. <laughs> you might. No, you can't tell I, him. No, 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 this is a self-awareness. You don't know what you say? What I say all the time. Yeah, something you say all the time. Me or Jamie? You. Oh. You. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I got it. I am. shooting together. Hard, like something that happened that made you laugh the hardest while you were working together. Oh. <laughs> Are you trying to read her mind? There's so many. I know. It's like, I'm... It's more the hardest cat laughs. <laughs> um, I mean, there's been times I've laughed so hard I've actually yeah. cried. Yeah, I think you so. wet yourself once. <laughs> uh, this is Pokemon to sell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say. I'm, okay, I'm gonna say. It's amazing That's how spoiler, difficult though. it was. There's a lot of shirts Back to putting front, on. Back upside down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I feel we're losing them. I, call, I know. Let's do one last one. This is taking a little longer than I thought. Sorry. Okay. Uh, favorite scene you ever shot together? Oh, God. Oh, ever? Okay, we have to be quick because we're losing. Okay, we'll be really quick. Um, <laughs> is anyone sleeping yet? <laughs> Anyone need uh, Sam to wake you up with a kiss? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone got any suggestions? <laughs> Did you write? You gotta write. Oh, you gotta write. What was it? The... Favorite, <laughs> favorite scene you yes. shot together. Yes. Just shot together. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, One, two, Jesus. three, reveal. All of them. What's with the boat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna rub this out. Rub, you're gonna no, rub, on, out. rub on the boat, rub it darling. Out. Us on the boat. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good scene. That was a good scene. It was very romantic. Yeah, oh my gosh. Okay. Sweet. <sighs> that was, there was a wind success. in our hair. There was salt in the air. <laughs> salt in my hair. <laughs> Diana, question for you. Oh, we're done. Yeah. Thank you for playing along. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do you have any favorite?
favorite thing that's been on the show that wasn't in the books? And also, is there anything that you felt really adamant about, a particular scene or moment that was really important to you, that it was 100% the way that you had envisioned it? Uh, yes, both. Uh, as for the first part, Rupert and Angus, I think they are just amazing. <laughs> Uh, the 18th century version of Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're great, yeah. yeah. As, uh, what was the second part? Uh, was there anything that you felt needed to, you were really adamant that it had to be 100% the way that you envisioned it, that it was important to you that it was this one moment or one scene or one line was really mm -hmm. Well, right. actually, there were a few of them, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, when I watched the first uh, couple of episodes with, with Ron, you know, in the, uh, production office. I was just absolutely fascinated. It was wonderful. But I was kind of keeping kind of a little tab going while I was watching it. You know, what, you know, what could I tell him that might be helpful and so forth. And there was the one scene where Jamie and Claire are by the fire and so forth, and it was wonderful. But in the final edit, they had cut off the scene or the line about uh, you need not be scared of anyone as long as I'm with you. So I told him, I said, you know, they'll miss that. <laughs> and he put it back. And he put it back. <laughs> I, I would say that there, there are a lot of amazing lines that Dan has written. And if they aren't there in that scene, they're in the books that they sometimes reappear elsewhere. Mm -hmm. and, or, or Ron is fantastic. He flips them. And, like, for instance, that voiceover that you, you see in... Uh, the first episode of this new season, the, when uh, when I walked out and she looked like uh, the sunshine, it, it, I think you flipped that. I think you read uh, originally read that. Um, yeah, from Claire's point of view, Claire's she sees him so, and says, so it's, you know, it's very clever. Okay, he sort of flips lines or, or just feeds them in mm -hmm. yeah. ways you can't see. No, it's a fabulous adaptation. He's done, done a wonderful job. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Like, well, if you have good material to work for and you have good writers to work with, then, you know, all things are possible. <laughs> to say nothing of the actors to carry it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh. <laughs> Ron, we've seen um, in other shows that we're following books in the past that sometimes the first or second season very closely mirror what happened in the books. And then as it goes on, it's sort of deviates in a different direction. And I'm just curious if you have so over, sort of an overall plan for future seasons, and do you feel like the show will ever stray that far from, from what the books are? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the plan is always to stick as close as possible to the book, you know, and that was always the, yeah. That's the plan in the first season. That's the plan as we approach the second season. And as you do the process of adaptation, you just naturally start making changes because they are different forms. It's, you know, it's a different experience to read something than it is to watch something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the hour format is different than, you know, pages. So you're making changes along the way, and at a certain point, what you're doing on screen obligates you to continue to follow those character traits in certain ways, in certain storylines. For instance, Frank. You know, Frank in the book, you know, we start, once we open up Frank a little bit more in the series, and we cut to Frank's point of view in episode eight of last season, well, that kind of changes your flavor of Frank. You know, it kind of changes who you think of as Frank. So you're kind of obligated to continue down that line. That being said, we are always at pains to say, okay, now we've made that change. Now we're obligated to follow that version of Frank, and we're obligated to sort of continue along that line. But we do want to stay in the lane. We still want to, you know, maintain what the fundamental story is, even as we go forward into subsequent seasons. So that's still the, 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 the mandate. I mean, it's a trickier thing, and this is my first adaptation for television, so I can't really tell you that I have a master plan for what season five, six, and seven are, other than... <laughs> which I'm happy to announce where I've been picked up tonight. No, uh, <laughs> gone. you're dead. If you say it, it has what? to be true. Yeah, it, it must be it's true. It's been picked up for seven seasons? Okay, thank you. And we'll just see how it, how it develops, but, you know, I, I can tell you that the intent is to continue to stay as true to the, to the story as we can, while keeping in mind, okay, now you have created certain facts on the TV show that then obligate you to continue that storyline. Because there's a fair chunk of the audience that's not here tonight 
that has never read the books, you know. And I always uh, analogize it to uh, Game of Thrones for me. I have never read those books. I watch the series, and I like the series. I don't know anything about the books, but I have to accept that television series on its own terms as is presented to me week after week. So the show, our show has to sort of serve both masters, to give the fans the joy of watching this come to life and also deliver a story to the people that have no, have no idea where the books are going and aren't missing any things that we've changed. And you're, you're serving both those audiences as you move forward. To say nothing of the author. And the author. <laughs> Tobias, can you mm. talk about what it's like to play two drastically different roles and what you put into, you know, are there sort of small choices that you made to make sure that Frank and Blackjack were so different? And are we going to see more of Frank um, moving forward? Not in this uh, second half of the first season, but he will come back in season two. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I think, you know, playing these two different people, um, something um, Ron said when I first met him stayed with me uh, throughout filming, which is he was as interested in what was similar about the two people as what was different about them. And I think that's been a touchstone throughout filming. Um, but mainly, I mean, you know, Diana has created uh, two really brilliant characters, um, and so you know, I think you'll agree. And so most of it was, uh, you know, to honour these two, uh, these people. And I mean, people say, you know, how, how do you go about sort of making them different? I sort of, I mainly it was really just you sort of try and serve the scene and the story, what you were filming, and trust that the, the production, the costuming, and all that will do a lot of the work for you. Um, you know, I was. Yeah, I think I was really keen for it to be a subtle difference <clears throat> rather than, you know, uh, someone with a, with a limp or something, just to make it really clear. That's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I find it a hard question to answer, really, because it was, it has felt quite an intuitive process, really, um, uh, rendering these two people. Um, but mainly, I think, you know, a lot of it is done by the writing and, and the production, the costuming, and, you know, yeah. I remember going down when you were being fitted for your costume mm. for Frank and for Jack. My wife, Terry Dresnick, the costume designer. <laughs> and she called me down when they were fitting you for both characters, and I remember, I remember being struck by the fact when I walked in and you were trying on the fedora and the jacket for Frank, I was like, oh, that's interesting. He's looking in the mirror, and we were talking about the costume, and then I went away and was doing other stuff, and she called later and said, okay, he's doing mm. Jack. So I came into the, the, the fitting room. There's this big three-way mirror standing there, and you were standing in the red coat. And I, as I walked in, I just was like, oh, he's standing differently. And it was just like you were looking at yourself in the mirror, and the way your body language was, and just you were just yeah. a different person. Yeah. And it was really interesting. Just visually, like immediately, there was like a delineation between yeah. the two characters. Yeah, I think the costuming and Terry's work, I did yeah. feed off that quite a lot, actually. She's, you know, she's done an amazing job, and that helped me hugely, I think, getting into them. Yeah. Kat, are you familiar with the game Kill, Mary Screw? Have you heard of this? <laughs> I may know this game, yes. <laughs> There, there are so many male characters on the show that I would just love to get your take on this. Okay. Out of all of the Outlander characters in real life, for you, Kat, which one would you kill, which one would you marry, and which one would you screw? <laughs> Kat, why are you on? And by the way, I really wanted to call this Kilt Mary Screw, but I couldn't think of how that would work, so we'll stick with Kill Mary Screw. Wow, what wow. a position I'm in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who do I kill? Wow. Relish. Um, I, oh, well, it's easy. I'll, I'll, I'll kill Father go. Bane. He's gone. <laughs> um, he's a goner. Uh, you got two left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Come on, Angus. Turn to your uh, <laughs> Angus uh, is not good. I don't know. I, yeah. It'll be a long year <laughs> next year. Yeah. I mean, 
No offense, Frank, but I'd probably have to screw Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that leaves to marrying her old, solid, reliable, <laughs> dependable... Blackjack! Fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah! Totally. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I would love to talk about the awards that this show deserves. And, Ron, I'm curious, given that you you know, you're formerly of Battlestar Galactica, which was a show that I felt was overlooked at the Emmys, was overlooked at the Golden Globes, um, perhaps because it was a sci-fi show. What can we do to get Outlander and every person on this stage an award? Because it is, I, I just feel like you all deserve it so much. Um, do, do, does that matter to you, first of all, the awards stuff? You know, uh, so you want to say... You, what do you think are the chances? It, it's weird. You know, you want to say it doesn't matter, and it does matter on some level. It's like you want it. You want it for the show. You want the recognition for all the people on the stage and all the people who are, are never on the stage for their work to be recognized. So you want that, but at the same time, it doesn't matter on a basic level. Battlestar didn't get that recognition, and I'm incredibly proud of it. I'm incredibly proud of what we did, and I think it'll, it'll stand and it'll last. So I don't need that. Um, there's nothing you can do, is, the, is, the, is the, the unfortunate truth of it. It is a bit of a crapshoot. Uh, you know, how many people here are members of the Academy? You know, it's like, <laughs> great. You know, you'll vote, so that's great. And <laughs> other than that, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's nice. It, it's meaningful. It's, you know, if it happens, you're, like, proud. And I'd, if, we, if the show won an Emmy, I'd bring it to the stage and I'd show it to everybody and it'd be... Fantastic, but if we don't get it or you know it's not acknowledged in that way, I just trust that you know what we've done um, is bigger than that. And I, I think it matters to the people that watch the show. Yeah. That's, that's enough. And this, this yeah. is an award. So. We've already won some fan awards this year, and we've shown half a season, and it's all down to these guys or the people that watch it. So. Yeah. Uh, to the actors, if you could switch roles with any other person on the show for just one day, who would you love to play for one day? Blackjack. Blackjack. <laughs> what? Blackjack. <laughs> and to, uh, to, to Ronald and, and Diana. He wants to be Blackjack, too. Oh, thank you. He wants to be, black, he wants to be Blackjack. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, More. <laughs> if you could work, if you could work on any other TV show for a day, which TV show would that be? Ooh, for a day? Mm -hmm. Vikings. Oh. I think, uh, what I like about that show, what appeals to me as a writer, is that it delivers a completely alien culture. Mm. You know, I mean, it's hard to deliver the idea of a period piece where uh, the social mores and, you know, what matters to them, you know, metaphysically and personally is so alien to where we are today as a modern society. And that show does that, and I find that fascinating. It would be fun to do that for a day. This is a question from the Paley app, and I think you all saw the timing. I started to ask the question, and you tapped me on the shoulder with this. So Stacey's D. Lovely and I have very like-minded questions, apparently, tonight. Um, if you could do another play, movie, or TV show with your fellow castmates, which is slightly different, what would it be? Uh, the Scottish play. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the name in I mean, yeah, yeah. Why would I be there? Well, I'd be a witch or something. <laughs> you could be Lady Macduff. I mean. no, no, no. You could be a. But uh, yeah, no, I think it would be fantastic. You could be Lady Macbeth. And, uh... Well, you'd reckon that. Right? <laughs> you could be a witch, too. Yeah. Anyway, Thanks, let's move on. Sam. No, I think that would be. Um... Yeah. I'd do uh, the sound of music and they could all be the Von Trapp children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You should do the one where it's singing in the rain. Which one's that? Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain. <laughs> I'm not very good at musicals. But <laughs> we could be. We could do singing in the rain. What do you think? <laughs> which one would be Cary Grant? Then that's the problem. <laughs> would you be? You'd get her to be Cary Grant. <laughs> Did any of you anticipate such an, such an incredibly passionate fan base, and what has your relationship with the fans been like thus far? I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've been wanting to see a visual version of Outlander for 23 years at least. And uh, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> We were waiting for them. <laughs> um, I mean, I, 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 I think, thankfully, I was not aware when I got cast. I think I was li living in this great bubble of naivete. Because if I'd known about all of you people, I think I... <laughs> I would have not showed up to work on the first day quite as calm as I did. Um, and it's just been incredible. I mean, I, I've just been just overwhelmed by the, the support and the generosity. I mean, everyone getting together. And it, it's so wonderful to see everyone making their own clubs and their own groups. And they do all these amazing things and raise money for our charities. And it's just wonderful to be part of something so positive. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> if you're if you're running in front of me, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm running the marathon on uh, Sunday. Uh, um, I'm terrified. I'm terrified because ladies remember no touching. <laughs> all you want, all you want. I. Uh, I would, I would love that. Anything to, yeah, take away from the heat. It's going to be pretty hot, I believe. And, uh, mm -hmm. But it's for my uh, charity event that we've created called My Peak Fitness. <laughs> thank you. That's why I like this. Thank you to everyone that's been involved in it. We raised, I don't know the, the end figure, but there's been some amazing people out there. And uh, we've raised about 50,000, 60,000. Uh, and it's still going up. So thank you so much. Geeky question for Ron and Diana. Uh, do we know how the time travel works? Or are we just sort of chalking it up to magic? No, it's not magic, it's science fiction. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no, I know how it works. Okay. But, uh, you know, if you're a time traveler, there's nobody who's going to appear to you and tell you how it works. You're going to work it out by trial and error, which is what the people in my books are doing. The story's not over, so they don't know how it works yet. <laughs> and, and do you have, like, a Randall family tree, an elaborate family tree somewhere that you've sort of kept to keep everyone all No, sorted? I kind of okay. leave that to the uh, professional nitpickers in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be opening it up to the audience for questions. But, but first, I, I want to tell you something cool that we're doing tonight, OK? The last time I saw Sam, I brought him a key and some pliers and asked him to make me my own <laughs> ring, which he did and I have not taken off. Don't tell my husband. <clears throat> so tonight, <laughs> Where is it? If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you also saw a picture of a uh, cat trying to break it off of my finger. I had the finger set. It's okay now. Uh, anyway, so tonight, I brought some old keys. I brought some pliers. And I would like to ask, no request for selfies or hugs, because it's not fair to everybody else and it takes too long. That's just kind of a general Paley thing. Mm -hmm. Also, no embarrassing, uncomfortable questions. So if you ask a good question that doesn't like upset anybody, then you will get your own ring that Sam is going to make for you <laughs> from these keys. If you ask a question and you're picked, and it's a good question, 
then when this is over, go to member services on the upper level, and there will be, I will be there with the rings, and I will Good. give you a ring that Sam has touched. <laughs> <laughs> so gonna, can you start working on the ring? Yeah, I'll start mind? now. Thank you very much. You're going to need more whiskey. That's yeah. all I need. Yeah, I, yeah, hold I, on. Does anybody need more whiskey? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've all got right. really big fingers. <laughs> All right, so raise your hand, and when I call on you, please stand, stand up. Okay, down here in the front with the purple bag right here, stand up, please. Oh. Diana? No, I'm good, thank you. Um, my question is for Diana. Um, Diana, I've been a fan for, of the books for all these 23 years, and had I known I'd have the honor of meeting you, I wouldn't have lent all those books away to friends to read. <laughs> so, That's a good thing to do. <laughs> it's a mitzvah. So I'm thrilled to have this opportunity all these years later. And, you know, when I first read Outlander, I loved the book, and I felt it was pretty self-contained. I mean, yeah, there were lingering questions and stuff that wasn't resolved, but I really, in, you know, I, I was okay with that lack of answer. And then the other books came out a little bit later, and so my question is, was it always your intention to have multiple books? Was it intended to be a series? Or was it something that over time the fans kind of demanded and, and you responded to that? Or what, what was kind of in your thoughts in terms of how, how long you wanted this to go on? And um, yeah. and I'm so glad that, you know, it was worth the wait, 23 years for the show. You it was, yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, in answer to your question, no, I wrote Outlander for practice in order to learn how to write a novel which I did, and uh, so it served its purpose. But along the way, we uh, got published. And uh, essentially what happened was that my agent sent it to a number of publishers, and I had told him when I gave it to him, I said, you know, I realize as I'm getting toward the end of the book that there's more to the story, but I thought I should stop while I could still lift it. And, um, <laughs> you know, but if anyone's interested, you can tell them I think there's more. And so he sent it to these publishers, and as everyone else has ever been, he was unable to describe the book. And he just said, you know, here is this really fascinating book. <laughs> I hope you like it. And if you do, she says there's more. And uh, they all came back and they said, we love this book. You know, pop trilogies are very popular these days. Do you think she could write three? And being a good agent, he said, oh, I'm sure she could. <laughs> so, uh, so they gave me a three book contract. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I wrote three books. And then I said, well, you know, there's actually still more. And, <laughs> and you know, I never said it was a trilogy. I just said there's more. <laughs> there still is. Has, has, anyone, has anyone ever weighed all, all the books? Uh, the actually, team. his secretary weighed the first one before sending it out, you know, for the postage. And she turned around to him and said, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and look how he's grown. <laughs> um, over here in, I think, a black shirt. You can stand up. Yes. Black and red dress. There we go. Yes. And please say your name so I can remember you later on. Hi, give you a my name is Cassie. Hi, Cassie. And this question's for anybody. I actually just want to know if anybody has pulled a very good prank on set. And if so, what it was. <laughs> or not. I don't know that we're such prankers. There's a lot of mm, very joking. Serious. Or seriousness. <laughs> Seriously, they just all say fuck a lot when they blow a line. <laughs> I, we, we do forget that Diana sees the part, you know, yeah. right after cut or right before I action. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do know there's some rather racy conversations that have been recorded. Do you think we'll get a blooper reel on the DVD? Maybe? Possibly. Possibly. Oh. We had a rap night party, and they had a, a reel playing of all the bloopers, and it's pretty much cat. It was pretty much cat swearing. <laughs> swearing, <laughs> laughing, falling over. <laughs> when she's drunk. OK. Um, <laughs> Over here in the white sweater with the black necklace. What's your name? Hi, my name is Wendy. And sorry. Uh, my name is Wendy, and I wanted to know since you brought up the DVD comment, I wanted to know if there'd be a commentary track when the DVD comes out. And uh, Diana, will you be will you be 
uh, giving your input on that? <laughs> the, the, uh, there's a set, the first uh, uh, DVD set of the first eight episodes is coming out. Um, it will not have, it's out, sorry. <laughs> See, this is why publicity and marketing hate me. Because I don't, it's like, oh, we're doing something. It's yeah, someone in the front has a copy. Do you there you go. Uh, <laughs> there's not a commentary track on there. However, the podcasts that I do and that I, I, I've done, I, I do some with my wife. I've done some with the writers. Uh, I think we've talked with Home Video about uh, putting those uh, podcasts as commentary tracks when the entire uh, first season is released, you know, closer to Christmas, yes. Okay, um, all the way in the back right yeah. there, with the black shirt on and her hand like, er, coming out of the socket. <laughs> Possibly doing a cheerleading pose, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yes, back one there. One arm or two? Yeah. One arm or two. With one arm, your right hand's up. Yeah, you have your right hand up. My sister-in-law. <laughs> yep. Hi. Okay, hi. My name hi. is John Springborn. Um, I'm a nurse, a trauma ER nurse, so I find that that portion of your ah. show is fantastic. And um, so, so I have a little um, extra question about that. Um, how did you come up with that actual part of that character, and what kind of research did you do? Did you use a nurse, or did you use the doctor? Ah, um, well... It uh, all happened when I realized that Claire was a time traveler, which I hadn't intended her to be. It was her idea. But um, <laughs> once I realized that, I, uh, I actually was a nursing instructor for a while at Temple University. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, it, it wasn't my main job. I did it for extra money. But um, I had taught human anatomy and physiology many, many times. And that's where Claire's broad but shallow grasp of clinical medicine comes from. <laughs> <laughs> give that microphone to your sister. Give that because I don't. I don't want this to be a huge family dispute. So give it to your sister. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we can all get along. It's okay. Yeah. Um, my question's for Sam because you are playing a sex symbol that has been a sex symbol for two and a half decades. So how are you dealing with the pressure of portraying Jamie Fraser, every woman's ideal man? We don't tell him those kinds of things. Do you two need to talk about this? Come on, Sam, tell you, us. You need to get writing, Diana. Uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a fantastic character. He's a sex symbol, I have no idea, but... Uh, <laughs> Has a lot of sex, though. Uh, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a wonderful character. And, and as you can see, we start to really find out who he really is. And the show will kind of develop that further. But um, thank you, Diana. You're welcome. <laughs> OK, uh, let's do down in the front right here, the black. Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. Black jacket. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name's Angela. Uh, my question is for Sam. Uh, you've said time and time again you are determined to do your own stunts and you won't let your stunt doubles do any work for you. Did that hold true until the end of the season? And are they upset or pissed because they don't get to it? <laughs> uh, we have a fantastic uh, crew who works on our show and they're, they're, they're amazing. From the, the makeup department who are... Yes, they, they're, they're wonderful. They, the, you know, all the ADs, the stunt department, uh, the, pe the people that do all the horses and writing and stuff we um we do as much as we can i have tried to do every single stunt um there are tiny parts of the show that uh we don't do second unit stuff which they do pickups of exteriors or you know big wide panoramic shots but yes i did uh i did i think all the fights all the the writing that was required and uh, there's there's an episode in, in this in the season where i was injured and i was i was fighting in it and i was desperate to do it because it felt um, I don't know, my pride got in the way, but maybe that's part of Jamie as well. I, I'm not going to give myself a ring for this because it's not an appropriate question, but do you have a butt double? <laughs> and then I will kindly show myself out. That's all the magic of CGI. <laughs> Shirt. 
she has a red shirt and like a, yes, you, you just turned around, yes, red shirt, yep, red dress. Red dress. Sorry, I can never see if it's a dress or a shirt. <laughs> and maybe it's coral colored, I can't quite tell. <laughs> Hi, my name's Cindy, and my question is for Kat and Sam. What do your families think of all of this? <laughs> How are they handling this? Oh, um, well, Outlander is out in Ireland, um, so all the episodes have aired, and it's quite funny because I didn't actually know whether my father had seen them or not because I'd heard nothing. Um, He'd seen them. I'm going to... <laughs> Um, my mom, my mom would, you know, feel like, oh, I saw that episode, it was great, or this happened, or whatever. I had crickets from my father. Um, but apparently through my sister, I heard he's enjoying it, so. They, they came on set, didn't they? They did, actually. Yeah, yeah, that was... <laughs> my father used to be a policeman, and he has a handshake that will crush any man. And I think he nearly broke every Gray McTavish's hand, uh, Sam's. He, he just likes to go in and crush. So, yeah, every, no one has forgotten that visit. <laughs> you warned us, so I went in there very strong. <laughs> He's a big man. Um, over here in a, like, a wine-colored shirt, maroon, lovely. Um, my name is Jennifer, and my question is for Ron. So many amazing things were written about episode seven, The Wedding, um, which was um, written by a woman and directed by a woman. Um, and Kenny, and where are you? Anne's here. Where's Anne? Oh, and Anne. Kenny wrote that episode. Wow. <laughs> Did you make a conscious decision? Um, that that particular material, those chapters of around the wedding, needed to have that female input, or was that just sort of random? Uh, I did kind of decide that. I, I said, let's, yeah, I just thought, let's do that and have a woman write it. And I thought, if we can get a woman director to do it, that would be a, a good touch. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, she did. The one thing I would say about that episode, and what's come up a lot since it came out in the press, and I was kind of surprised at the reaction, in that everybody talked about, oh, now it's sex from the, you know, the, the woman's gaze and the female point of view, and, you know, and it was a whole thing about this was a you know, turning point of, of uh, feminism on television, and, you know, that we had done this and crafted this episode from, specifically from a female point of view. That really wasn't how we approached it, in all honesty. We just approached it in what... I talked about with Anne, what I talked about with the director, Anna, was let's just make this true. Let's make it authentic. Let's try to realize a wedding night and, you know, sexuality between two people, you know, a, a couple that doesn't know each other, that's going to learn about each other over the course of the night. And let's give the actors space. Let's give them rehearsal time. And let's just try to go for something that's real and not do TV sex, which is just bogus and that none of us actually have. And let's just... Let's try to be, bring a certain honesty to it and try to be as authentic as we can. And then, ironically, evidently, when you do something truthful, it becomes the female point of view, which is sort of an interesting <laughs> takeaway from the whole thing. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, but we are out of time. That was my favorite question of the night, so next time you should moderate. Thank you for that one. That was a great question. People at home that didn't hear, uh, the, the question that was yelled out was, did she get paid as much as a man, the writer? Uh, which is great. Thank you all so much for being here. Please watch Outlander on April 4th on Stars. And thank you so much, you guys. That was great.